Yeah, talking tax with Tom Yamachika here on a given Thursday at 10 o'clock. I'm, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and we always learn new, exciting, and sometimes disturbing things in talking with Tom. Tom, you are a disturbing person. What can I say? Welcome to the show. With that kind of welcome, I don't know what to say, Jay. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're talking today about the great tax credit hunt, um, and it's, it's really all about the Earned Income Tax Credit, EITC. And we'll get into the weeds on that in a minute. But first, I want to ask you, if we want to give relief um, to people at the low end of the income scale, and maybe not so much relief to people at the high end of the income scale, why don't we just reorganize and rationalize um, the, the schedule of tax rates? Wouldn't that be so much simpler? No, I, I entirely agree with that. Matter of fact, the, um, there's a similar debate brewing on the federal side because uh, the, uh, the, the Congress has enacted you know, so many new things uh, that use basically the IRS as a, a welfare distribution system. They're, they're having IRS send out monthly credit checks every month, you know, and which, which they've never done before. And they're really not equipped to do that. That's, that's not what they do. They're there to take in money, not give out, okay? Yeah, um, and, and they have been behind the eight ball on, on budget funding for years. The Congress hasn't given them enough money for them to do what they want to do anyway. Absolutely. And, and now they, they're, they're kind of saddling them with, uh, you know, other stuff that, you know, human services or Social Security is much better equipped to do. You know, it's like uh, everybody is terrified over tax reform because you don't know who it's going to bite. And you know you don't know how the the sausage will be made, so to speak, once it gets into a legislative forum. And of course, that's still the case. It'll probably always be the case. But ideally, and maybe this is what constitutional conventions are all about. Ideally, you sweep the whole thing out the door and start again. I mean, countries, for example, in Europe, uh, that um, you know have the ability to do that. Uh, and, and do serious tax reform, uh, come up with better systems. They're brand new and they don't have this baggage that we seem to have. What are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. For a long time, we at the foundation have been saying that the thing that the legislature should be doing is basically getting rid of the old, you know, getting rid of the tax brackets, some of which date back to the 1960s or before and just revamping the schedules so we don't tax people who are already in poverty deeper into poverty. Because, you know, back in the 60s, we, you know, we, we uh, you know, taxing somebody who made, a, you know, $1,200 was meaningful. Now it's not. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, a few years ago, I, I took a look at, uh, you know, where the poverty line was with relation to our tax brackets. And somebody earning at the federal poverty line is in our fourth tax bracket, fourth from the bottom. So not the lowest, not the second lowest, not the third lowest, but the fourth. Okay. I mean, that's to me, that's insane. We we are, I mean, they ought to be taxed at zero or close to it, in my opinion. Yes. But, but, well, but the other that, thing is the other thing is legislatures are not really uh, equipped uh, to make um, you know adjustments in rates or in you know in these various provisions. Um, because they don't get the information fast enough. They don't understand that there's four levels of poverty there. They don't, they don't know that. And, and nobody is telling them um, real time what's happening. And I've always felt that um, if we wanted to do this kind of rate modification, it should be an algorithm. It should, you know, this, is, this is the economy of the state. These are the people who are disadvantaged. These are the people who are not. And the algorithm figures it out based on the the statistics of income of the state. And bingo, you have a new rate schedule and it can change you know, year to year, whatever. Uh, I know that's not the subject of our show. I'm just throwing that out there because I'm, I'm into technology and I'm into algorithms. Ooh, bad, bad word. Uh, anyway, Tom, let's talk, about, let's talk about the earned income tax credit. What is the purpose of such a thing? Um, and how, what is its current status? We, we have an earned income tax credit. You know, not only does, does the IRS have one, 
uh, and it's been touted as the uh, you know the greatest program since sliced bread to get people out of poverty. Um, but it is exceedingly complex, and uh, uh, it's very tough to administer on the federal level. But you know our our legislature and our uh, representatives and senators in their in their wisdom uh, said that we should do that for Hawaii also so we did okay and uh, now I think is a, is a good time to be talking about it because many of the of our working families are struggling through the income tax forms as we speak so um, it turns out uh, that uh, because of the way the forms are put together uh, they're going to need some spoilers to help them actually find things that they should be finding. For example, yes, we have a state earned income tax credit, but where the heck is it? And we're going to go through some of the forms so that I can show you what the problem is. Please okay? do. Please do. All right. So let's start with the first slide. Uh, this slide here is a, a part of our, uh, after that one, there we go. Uh, that one is a part of the Form N11, which is the income tax return that most Hawaii residents fill out. Uh, this, uh, what I'm showing here is that part of the return uh, that uh, uh, where you claim credits, right? I mean, so there, there are certain lines on the return for different kinds of credits. You see that? Okay. Not well, not well, uh, but I, I do see it. Uh, but let me let me let me just uh, in interject one point. If the federal government has this, uh, and if the state wants to do it, and if the state so often just copies out what the federal government is doing, you know, like bingo, we're doing the same thing. We yeah. uh, adopt, ratify the federal system. Why? Yeah. Why is is that not happening here? And why not? No, that's um, uh, this is another copycat credit. It's, it's an additional sweetener on top of the federal tax credit. Uh, you need to claim the federal tax credit to be eligible for ours. Um, so uh, so it's the same thing. The calculation, the form is all yeah, the same the, thing. The rate's different. I mean, we, we have a smaller tax, so, so our credit mm -hmm. amount is different. And uh, the, the federal earned income tax credit is refundable, which means that if you don't owe tax and you have some credit, the, the federal government will write you a check. Mm. Okay, ours is non-refundable, which means that if you don't owe tax and you have this credit, uh, our government will not write you a check, but will carry over the credit to other years so that you don't have to pay tax in the future. Okay. Okay. But who knows this? I mean, not, not many people uh, who, you know, are normal working families, uh, not many people would know this. So, uh, let's let's kind of go back to your slide number two, which shows the uh, the tax form, and and say, well, okay, where is uh, where do you claim the uh, uh, the earned income tax credit? And you know, take a look at that that part of the return. Uh, there isn't anything that says earned income tax credit. Nothing. <laughs> Okay. So we we um, at the Tax Foundation are going to give you a spoiler. So let's go to the next slide. See that uh, little ye little yellow oval? That's where you claim the credit. Uh, it's on a line that says total non-refundable credits attached schedule CO. Okay. So that means we got to pull another form. Okay. So let's, let's go to the next slide. And the form is called Schedule CR, Schedule of Tax Credits. Okay, um, I, I need to give you another spoiler over here. Uh, if you look uh, on the department's website uh, to pull the form down, okay, uh, you're probably looking in the N, the N forms, right? Because N11 is the income tax form and it starts with an N. So you look all through the, uh, the end list, and it's not there. Why? Because in their infinite wisdom, our tax department said, Schedule CR starts with an S. 
So you go to the S's and there it is. So you pull down schedule CR. And so this, this is how it starts. So it, so it names a few tax credits. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And here it names a few more tax credits. And let's go to the next slide. And this is the uh, last page of the form. Now, where do you suppose the earned income tax credit is? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. <laughs> it doesn't say. It just, it just gives you lists of form numbers. So you have to figure out that there is in, indeed another form you have to pull. Um, and they don't tell you what it is. And by the way, even if you look in the instructions to the N11 and you look for earned income tax credit, it's not there. So, yeah, I mean, our, our, our tax office is making this stuff really easy to find. Well, it sounds like this is something that a tax return preparer would, would like to have because uh, the average Joe, including the average uh, Joe in poverty, um, won't have a clue on how to do it. And he will have to go to a tax return preparer to get it done. Yeah, so, so the, the average Joes who can, who can afford the H&R blocks or the uh, accountants or the CPAs, um, yeah, yeah they, they can certainly do that. But if they don't, and, and they're trying to do it themselves, uh, you know, I, uh, I did that for, you know, a few years myself. Um, and now I have tax software. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, what's interesting about this is it all seems to be um, miles away from effectuating the original purpose. And the original purpose is to alleviate, am I right? Poverty in this state to, to give the people who are economically disadvantaged a break. Uh, of course, the first way is with housing and the cost of the cost of occupancy. But we are not doing very much in that department. Um, and then, of course, there's tax. We're not doing very much in that department either. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but but so let me let me let me just kind of go and 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 get through a couple more slides. So so we were showing you. Uh, that part of the schedule CR, uh, and let's let's bring that back. Um, here's the spoiler. Okay, uh, the spoiler is the uh, the next slide with the green text, and it says, "Here's uh, where you know here's what the each of these little uh, form numbers stand for." So you so you have you know six or seven different things, and well, yeah, I mean you know the the um, the credit names are kind of long, but I mean, what, why don't they, you know, just name what these stupid credits are so people have a, at least a, a, a ghost of a chance of finding rid of things? But, but, but as it turns out, they, they kind of take it from the perspective of, well, um, it really, really, you need only the, only the taxpayers really you need to know about this. Uh, so everything's kind of like put in code. N356, oh yeah, you need an N356 and then you need a Schedule CR and you need to carry that over to the uh, Form N11 and the non-refundable non credit code. Oh, how, how, how many ordinary people know that? So we got stats on how many people who theoretically qualify for the credit are actually taking the credit? Uh, I don't know if we do. Because it strikes me that you know it's hard for anybody at any end of the scale um, to fill out tax returns that are written this way, and um, for somebody who may not have great education or any money uh, or friends, you know, to call and compare notes with, um, that person is going to have a lesser chance of finding it and taking advantage of it. So uh, the probability is just the probability, but the probability is that. Um, a lot of the people who are theoretically entitled to this credit are not taking this credit. Period. Yeah. Either they don't know about it. They they, they look at they look on the form and they they can't find it and they say, oh, well, I guess I guess we don't have it. Um, 
So why would they care about it, Tom? I mean, is it a lot of money? Is it going to save their bacon, this credit? Well, I mean, I don't think that's the point here. The point here is that our legislature and its, its collective wisdom said, we want to give this to our people, right? And so it's it's then becomes the duty of the tax office uh, to make it available to the people. And then they can, and they say, oh, we're making this available. I mean, it's on the form. Well, yeah, uh, if if you have, you know, the right kind of coated magnifying glass, <laughs> but, 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 but can normal people find this stuff? And, and I, I, I firmly believe that that tax form, they're supposed to be approachable by normal people. Well, I, I, I guess this, uh, you know, the, the good news is this is the only, this is the only provision, the only credit, the only um, tax form that has this problem that all the other tax forms that we use and see and need to know about, all those other tax forms are clear as a bell. Uh, and they identify exactly what you're supposed to do. Is that the good news? Of course not. I mean, even even on that one page that I showed you, um, there there were you know eight or nine uh, credits who weren't even identified on the form. And, and uh, you know, if you didn't see our spoiler, uh, you might never know. Uh, yes. Uh, you can get the schedule, see our instructions, and it's all there. That's another spoiler. Uh, and if you are, you know, uh, so, so resourceful as to uh, know to pull down the instructions for that form, uh, you know, kudos to you, uh, and my hats off to you. But if, uh, but 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 then the question becomes, well, you know, is this form approachable by normal everyday people? Uh, at whom the credit is directed. You know, there's been a lot of criticism leveled at uh, Hawaii government, which is huge, and some people say very bloated. Um, but I think one thing has been demonstrated over the years to me is that it's not a sense of service. You know, like, for example, we did a show involving um, Helsinki, I know that's a long way from where you wanted to go on this show, but Helsinki and and they, they call Helsinki uh, the city as a service. In other words, everything that happens in that city is dedicated to public service. They, they see every inhabitant as as a customer, as a client, as somebody they need to service and make make them feel good. Um, but this this uh, sort of suggests something that I have felt for a long time is that Hawaii, Hawaii government doesn't think that way. Um, that it's, it's more adversarial. It's more, uh, I don't care how you feel. I don't care if you feel that government is serving you or not. I'm doing it the way I like it, not the way you like it. Um, is, is there, is there a, a, some element to that here in, in what you've been describing? Well, I, I, I know that there are people in the Department of Tax, like there are in every, any other agency, uh, that have the spirit of public service, uh, but that's it's not everybody. Um, the you know some other people are concerned about well, geez, you know there's uh, th there's no real estate left on this form. If I got to put in three columns, uh, uh, you know, as well as the description of the credit, so I don't have enough real estate. I'm going to leave the you know I'm going to leave the title of the credit out. So, so why, why is this? And help me understand why we are having this conversation. Uh, why is this so difficult? Well, is there no one in a position of, um, you know, creative authority in the tax office who would understand what you're saying? No one who would come at this problem and try to solve the problem on behalf of the taxpayer? Is there no one who um, is able to or trained to write a tax, um, you know, a, 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 a tax form that that you can understand? Well, I'm sure there are. Um, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, the form that we have now 
is not approachable by the people who it's designed to service. And and you know it 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 really kind of got. I mean this this topic for me got started uh, from a letter to the editor that somebody wrote to the Star Advertiser, and they said, you know, we've been trying to claim the income tax credit, but we can't find it. And I go, oh really? And I and I trace through it, and I go, well yeah, I, I, I guess I can see why you can't find it. And that, that's why I decided to come up with this topic, because uh, you know. Like, you know, people across the state right now, including you know, many of your listeners, are probably wrestling with your, you know, with their tax forms, federal and state, even as we speak. So uh, this is, you know, something that they really ought to uh, be be mindful of, and, and this might even help them. Well, suppose, um, suppose you are right about this, and suppose uh, the government agreed with you. And the government said, gee, if we're going to try to help people, we ought to actually make it, make it easy for them to apply for and get these benefits that we have adopted in the legislature. Who would do that? Would it be the governor? Um, would it be the legislature? Would it be the tax office? Uh, who, who would step forward and say, wait a minute, you know, Tom is right. We have to correct this and we have to make it, you know, we have to democratize it, so to speak. We have to make it easy to understand easy to fill out these forms, not only for this particular credit, for all the credits, and not only for the credits, but filling out the tax return in general. A, a lot of people just have a lot of trouble with these tax returns. Um, why not make it easier? And who is the person who would step forward and say, and say that, adopt that? For example, if I'm running for office, here's an interesting question for you, Tom. If I'm running for office and I'm looking for platform points, why not take this as a platform point? Would this work politically? Well, I, I think that uh, you know a lot of the uh, what we're talking about today is you know really kind of deep in the weeds for platform points. Um, these are like you know nitty gritty details that are supposed to be worked out at the at the executive agency level. So. Really, the people who are most equipped and, and you know, best positioned to deal with this uh, are those at the Department of Taxation. So uh, they create the forms, they rewrite them, uh, they can make the changes that are necessary. Um, if the problem is we don't have enough real estate to put the the, uh, the the descriptions of the credits, I say, you know, get rid of some of those damn columns that you don't need, and uh, and, and puts at least the credit titles in there so people know what the hell they're talking about. And then they, they know what the heck they're filling in. I have a very important question for you about this. So most of our lives, when we are interacting with, um, you know, other people and organizations, applying for things, for example, um, we go online. Okay, and and... You and I know that some online systems, you know, forms and the like, um, wizards, if you will, are easy to fill out, and some are not. But w why don't we have tax returns that are completely online, like wizards? So it takes you logically through the system, through the maze of possibilities, and it helps you make those choices. It's like, like any good programmer would do. Why don't we have that? Wouldn't that be a, a tremendous public benefit uh, if people are going to engage with the government? I know that you know, in the case of people who don't have any money, they don't have any computers, but you could do it on your phone too. And everybody has a phone. Why, why don't we spend some time and thinking about how to make this really easy on a systematic, logical basis on some online platform? Well, um, to answer your first question, uh, you know, that, that's already been licked, okay? Um, the, uh, there are, uh, the, uh, you know, software companies that put out, um, you know, on, you know, online filing, you, you log into the site, you answer the questions on the, uh, that, that the um, 
program interviews you with and you know oh pops a tax return okay you know several companies do that uh and they're competing with each other in the marketplace uh the irs has put out something called free file which uh, is uh, which which can be used by uh lower income taxpayers those those are you know more simple returns um but yeah software like that already is available uh, do we have that in hawaii i don't think so um uh and that's you know perhaps something we ought to invest in now uh, investing in a project like that takes you know a couple of things number one it takes initiative number two it takes resources okay uh which means that the government you know has to you know, say okay this amount of tax money is going to be given to the department of taxation to you know, enhance this system or that system now um politically speaking uh it's it's way easier for politicians to you know defund the tax collector they've been doing it for years uh some of them you know find it fun to do that i think uh and and that i think is one reason why both the irs and in my view the hawaii department of taxation has got a lot of uh you know a lot of the short sticks on the you know short 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 straws in the budget bundle yeah, and that's, yeah. Not, and, and, and that's not going to change so I remember uh, Neil Abercrombie's big tear was that he wanted to upgrade the state computer system um, and um, he was he promised us that he would do that and in short order and he brought in this guy from uh, federal government uh, by the name of Sonny Bagwalia and uh, the uh, um, that part of the federal government that deals with logistics. And a um, guy came out here and formed a team of public-private partnership to fund at least part of his cost. And he spent mm, two or three years examining the state computer system. And in the end, he wrote this huge big report that said the state computer system is way behind the curve. Uh, so that was you know, something we already knew. Um, and then he left. Um, and what troubled me about that is that that's the state computer system. That's among the agencies of the state. You know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what he was doing or writing his report about, but I don't think. Well, there that he isn't was... just one state computer system. That's part of the problem. You know, right. there, there are several. That's right. That's what he was doing. He was trying to bring them all together. They don't. So it, to no, they don't. And, they and, don't. and they're all archaic and, you know, and they're failing. And, and, you know, they're not supported anymore, either hardware or software. But my point, though, is that um, he was addressing, and Abercrombie was addressing, the state computer system, how the state engages and operates. I don't think it was covering this kind of thing, how the state engages and operates with the citizens, with the taxpayers. Yes, and that's, that's very, very important as well. Well, we only have a minute more, and I would like to return to something that I was asking you about at the very beginning, and that's this. We have a lot of poor people that we really need to take care of. And there are many, many things that make them poor uh, and keep them poor. And some parts of the state government are dedicated to that. Um, and um, I guess, query, are we addressing this properly to say, well, let's give them a, a tax credit? But there are so many other things we could and should do to alleviate the poverty. Um, and I mentioned earlier, housing, for example, it's, it's critical. We're way behind in housing, even for the middle, middle class. Um, but we're even further behind in housing for the disadvantaged. And rents are too high, they're out on the street, they're homeless. It's a travesty, it's a shame, it's a public shame. So, you know, if you go back down the route here, and you look at the, the reasons for this particular credit in the beginning, I mean, either federal or state, it's got to be there's a lot of poor people who shouldn't be paying as much tax as the rest of us. And I'm thinking, you know, if you look at the social problem underlying that phenomenon, it's not necessarily a tax problem, 
or a tax solution. It's a, it's a community problem. It's an economic problem. It's a societal it, problem. Yeah. Societal problem. Thank you. And, and uh, you know, government can be many things to many people, but it, it can't solve everything. Um, it can you know, help uh, if you know, agencies are you know, properly focused on doing the right things. Um, we you know one one of the organizational problems that I think we need to be wary of is you know giving an agency too broad of a mandate or stretching it beyond uh, its competency level, which you know when you start getting those credits proliferating, uh, you are stretching uh, you know DO taxes competency. I agree, and I agree with you that um, you know we we. We cannot have the Department of Taxation um, take, you know, organize a comprehensive solution here. It's not, it's not in their wheelhouse. Um, that that has to come from somewhere else. We need overarching, uh, may I use the term, critical thinking, uh, to develop um, public policy and uh, coordinated efforts by all branches of state government. So if I say to all the branches of state government, look, we got a poverty problem here. Think of something, and then you let me know, and then we'll do it um, in order to achieve a comprehensive plan. I don't think we've done that, but it strikes me that you can't do it at the at the agency level and expect it to be comprehensive. It has to be at, at the gubernatorial level. Don't you agree? Yep, I agree, and that's that's why they uh, had a governor's housing coordinator. Um, uh, that, that, that gentleman who used to be with Focus is, is leading that now. He's, he's kind of been, uh, you know, shaking the trees for like three, four years now. Um, hopefully, the, you know, they, they've accomplished something. I'm not really sure what, but, but hopefully they're getting more coordinated. Well, this tax credit should be easier to find and, and uh, obtain. We've examined how it might be improved. Uh, and we have we have agreed that there's a lot of poor people in the state that need to be helped in, in ways that are meaningful and sustainable. Um, we've agreed that that takes um, leadership. We've also agreed that, well, we haven't discussed this, but I think you will agree with me is that if we don't take care of them, the quality of life of everyone in the state is affected. Nobody wants those blue tents out there. Nobody wants the homeless. Working homeless is the worst of all, where they work and scrimp and save, and they still can't afford the cost of occupancy. So we have these, um, you know, serious um, societal problems, and um, I hope that comes up as a platform point somewhere along the line. <laughs> yes, agreed. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tom. Always fun to talk. You're always stimulating. Actually, uh, you know, it's either stimulating or disturbing, or both. Usually both. <laughs> Thank you for calling me a disturbing person at the at the at the start of the show. <laughs> it's a compliment. It's a compliment, Tom. Don't you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm Yamachika, yeah. president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We always enjoy our discussions and we learn so much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, G, for having me on the show. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.